Good morning, no shopping. Today, I will be talking about scaling WordPress with Amazon Cloud. But first, who am I and I am what I am doing? My name is Milian Kurebenishek, and I live and work in Belgrade, which is capital of Serbia. I have built my first website at the age of 13 years, and from that point, I have built a lot of uh, web application, mobile application, and do some desktop development also. Today, I am working as a software engineer for company Devana Technologies, which is behind one great product, Manage WP. Uh, what I do daily? Well, I develop things with uh, WordPress, Symfony, Doctrine, Doctrine Stack. I also build infrastructure things with Amazon Cloud uh, configuration management tools like Ansible. I also do some DB stuff with MySQL, uh, MongoDB, and things like that. Uh, why I'm here today? Well, I have something to share with you, but first I need to ask you one question. What will happen with your site uh, when you are on your vacation and enjoying it? Will your phone ring from angry client who just launched some viral uh, Facebook campaign and site just broke. Well, this is me during my vacation just a few days ago in Greece and my phone didn't ring. I just saw scaling log, logs and that was everything. What I'm Bill covering today? Well, Amazon components, separating data layer, horizontal scaling, code deployment, and this will be architectural overview and not step-by-step -step tutorial. Uh, well, Amazon have a lot of components. Uh, this is just a few of them that we'll be using, and I'll be tell something about them. The first component is uh, Virtual Private Cloud, or VPC. Uh, virtual Private Cloud is partly uh, isolated uh, part of Amazon Cloud, your own private network, with your own IP ranges, uh, uh, subnets, uh, your own routing table, uh, you have complete uh, configuration control over this network. We'll be using this uh, for security uh, reason. Uh, the next thing is Elastic Compute uh, Cloud. Uh, this is uh, actually resizing uh, compute unit with uh, real physical uh, CPU, memory, and uh, disk uh, unit. This is the place where uh, the whole code is executed. Well, there is a lot of uh, instance types that you can use, and I'll be tell you something about that uh, later. Uh, this instance can have uh, two kinds of storage, persistent storage and also non-persistent storage. Uh, persistent storage utilizes something uh, with name Elastic Block Storage, uh, which is actually a network disk with uh, abstraction uh, that you mount and boot your system uh, from uh, this point. Uh, underneath is SSD uh, disk, uh, and there is two variety of this disk. The first one is general purpose, which is okay for, uh, let's say, normal application. And we have provisioned I.O. Uh, disk uh, for demanding uh, read-write uh, application. Uh, and these uh, uh, provisioned IOPS are guaranteed. And also we have non-persistent disk. Uh, this, uh, the whole content and all data at this disk will be lost during uh, reboot uh, and termination of this instance. The next component that we'll be using is Elastic IP. Elastic IP is actually a static IP, just uh, we design for a uh, uh, cloud system. What it do? Well, uh, you can quickly uh, remap this uh, IP from one instance to another instance, so you can mask uh, failure of uh, one service, one instance. This IP is tied to uh, your account and uh, not uh, to any specific instance. Uh, the next uh, thing that we'll be 
using is Elastic Load Balancing, or ELB. Uh, what this service do is automatically route traffic, incoming traffic, to all of your uh, background uh, instance. Uh, routing can be uh, done uh, on two uh, layers, uh, layer four or layer seven. Layer four is doing uh, just plain TCP balancing and layer seven is doing HTTP and HTTPS uh, uh, balancing. Uh, ELB have one nice feature and that feature is health tracking of background instance. So only uh, health instance will receive uh, traffic. Uh, one great feature also is SSL offloading. So uh, you reduce your CPU usage uh, of your instance. Uh, uh, ELB automatically scale, but there is uh, uh, one thing that you need to know about this. Uh, if you have uh, large uh, spikes in traffic, for example, from 100 visitor to 20,000 visitor, well, uh, Amazon suggests to contact them to pre-warm your uh, ELB in order to be able to receive this uh, traffic. Uh, in other variant, it automatically scales up and down without your uh, need. It's also fully operational uh, monitoring. So you will have a complete status, for example, from backend latency, uh, 400, 500 status codes, and things like that. The next component is root 53. Root 53 is actually domain name uh, uh, system uh, designed uh, for cloud. It's uh, scalable also. Uh, it can serve like DNS system for your uh, private VPC, and also uh, support uh, health checking of your back background instance. Uh, it can also do some uh, cool stuff, like uh, routing your traffic, and there is uh, a few uh, types of routing. Uh, Latency-based uh, routing, uh, geographic uh, targeting, uh, weighted, weighted round robin, uh, failover also, and simple uh, straightforward routing. CloudFront is next component. This component is actually CDN or content delivery uh, network. Uh, what this does, it's, well, uh, there is a lot of edge servers uh, everywhere in the world. And these servers are connected with dedicated short path uh, links that are uh, fully monitored. So your data does not uh, travel across a uh, public network with variety of routing. Uh, it does support uh, dynamic content, it supports variety of HTTP uh, requests like pod boosts and also uh, supports geographic targeting. The next component that we'll be using is auto-scaling and in that context we'll be using auto-scaling group and large configuration. Auto-scaling uh, allows you automatically uh, to uh, increase number of your backend instance in case if you have uh, traffic spikes and in case of uh, off hours, uh, this instance will be automatically uh, terminated. Uh, one nice feature is also uh, health monitoring of your instance, so uh, unhealthy instance will not uh, receive traffic and it will be uh, replaced also. Uh, launch configuration just describes uh, what will be uh, launched. The next component that we'll be using is a simple storage service or S3 service. This service is a scale scalable and durable uh, object storage. Uh, you have unlimited uh, unlimited storage per bucket. Uh, bucket is something like I like to say folder. Uh, every file stored on S3 is cross-region uh, replicated, so it's fully uh, fault to tolerant. It does support uh, versioning of your files, so you can have multiple versions of single file. 
uh, it does support uh, data lifecycle. For example, uh, you can configure to after 30 days uh, your file be archived or delete depending on your need. Uh, the next component that we'll be using is Elastic Cache. Elastic Cache is a memory-based system uh, with support for two engines, Memcached uh, and Redis. It's fully uh, managed. Uh, it supports uh, multi-zone replication. Uh, and it has automatic uh, failover. Uh, also, it does support backupping and restoring uh, of your data, back basically point in uh, time. Also, like every service here, it does support detailed monitoring, so you can see how much you have uh, get requests, how you have set requests, so you can further monitor uh, that and uh, plan your development. The last component in this section is uh, Relation Database Service. The Relation Database Service is a uh, database management uh, system uh, in cloud. It's completely scalable and it does support uh, fail uh, over. What RTS do? Well, it supports automatic patching of your uh, instance upgrading, so you don't need uh, to do that manually and you don't need to worry uh, about that. It does support uh, automatic backups also, which is not, yeah, one nice uh, feature. Uh, I think in this moment that uh, you can store up to 35 uh, daily uh, backups uh, of your data and you can restore uh, any point in time with these uh, backups. Currently there is support for a few uh, engines. The first one is Aurora, which is uh, MySQL implementation uh, version 5.6 but just Amazon implementation. Then there is standard MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, and uh, of course, SQL Server. The next chapter will be data separation. Well, why we need to separate uh, our data? We want to ensure capacity for further growth. Uh, we want to speed up our performance, and we want to prepare uh, us for horizontal scaling. And we also want to make uh, our data highly available. What we'll be doing uh, here? Well, we'll be using CloudFront as a CDN uh, the provider. Uh, CloudFront does support uh, caching rules based on uh, URL or uh, standard HTTP uh, headers. Uh, CloudFront and S3 have great uh, uh, implementation and synchronization, so we'll be uh, hosting our files on uh, static files on S3. Uh, all our dynamic content will be served uh, from EC2 instance, but with uh, caching headers, and uh, CloudFront will uh, utilize brow browser caching uh, also. This will reduce our uh, backend hits and will also optimize uh, delivery time to user. The, it will be lower uh, the latency. What will we do? Well, we'll be uh, using uh, root 53 for our DNS management, CloudFront for distribution, and CloudFront will uh, serve our traffic static file from S3 bucket and dynamic uh, content from uh, our EC2 instance. But first, uh, we need to put our files on uh, S3. Uh, like you know, uh, WordPress does not support uh, any cloud natively, so we will be need to use some plugin uh, for uh, that. Two plugins that uh, can upload uh, media files and static file to S3 are uh, uh, W3 Total Cache and uh, WP Offload S3. Uh, the first one plugin is free to do and support exporting of your existing files. And the second uh, uh, also support this, but uh, it's paid feature to export your existing file. Uh, this plugin will upload your data to S3 and uh, replace URL in uh, database. Uh, also, you can do uh, this via uh, 
system level and you can use S3FS uh, via Fuse, which actually uh, mounts S3 bucket as your uh, local uh, disk. If you're using uh, this, uh, it will be not that fast like local system because in background it's doing HTTP uh, request, uh, but does not require that much uh, uh, synchronization in your uh, WordPress database and does not require uh, URL uh, replacement. Uh, also, we'll move our database from single instance uh, to our hosted database or RDS uh, service and we can use uh, Aurora or MySQL engine. Uh, our configuration will be master-slave uh, with uh, multi-zone uh, availability uh, setup. What we can do here, we can send all our read requests to our slaves, which are uh, read only, so we can uh, optimize uh, scaling of our database, and we will send just writes to our master database. Uh, WordPress does not support this automatically, but there is uh, one nice uh, plugin, HyperDB, uh, which is drop-in replacement for WPDB. Uh, uh, How much I know, uh, HyperDB is developed by uh, WordPress.com and they're using that for uh, their commercial uh, product. Uh, HyperDB also support uh, failover on application level and it have, it have some also nice uh, feature. Uh, also, RDS will give us uh, uh, automatic failover in case of uh, downtime of our master node. Uh, also, we want to reduce uh, hits to our uh, database, and in that case, we'll be using uh, object cache that WordPress uh, provides to us. Uh, by default, uh, uh, these objects are not stored anywhere, so we'll be need to use some uh, external plugin for this. Again, we can use W3 total cache or we can use uh, memcached object cache. In this case, we'll be using memcached, but there is also plugins that support uh, Redis if you prefer that. So finally, this will be our schema for uh, data separation layer. We'll be using Route 53, again, for our DNS management, CloudFront for uh, content delivery with static file from S3 bucket, and we'll be route our dynamic content to our web server. This server will, will be connected to uh, Elastic Cache Node in one and another region with uh, MySQL master and automatic replication to uh, our slave in uh, another region. In this way, we made uh, our data highly available and we prepared that data for horizontal scaling. Uh, well, for horizontal scaling, we'll be using uh, automatic uh, scaling, uh, uh, which is a uh, free uh, service of Amazon. And the first thing that will route our traffic uh, is uh, ELB. Uh, uh, we will configure uh, ELB to do our health checking of our uh, background instances. Uh, and what we need to create also is uh, large configurations and alarms that will uh, trigger uh, these scaling events. A launch configuration describe uh, what will you launch. It describes instance types, uh, storage type, network configuration, uh, security groups and things like that. Uh, alarms are various metrics uh, with given threshold. Uh, metrics, uh, there is a variety of these metrics and Amazon give you a few hundred metrics uh, for all their service that uh, they support. For example, sample, sample metrics can be CPU utilization, network in or out, memory usage, uh, disk I.O., throughputs, and all sorts of these things. For many cases, uh, CPU uh, usage will be the most sufficient uh, metric that you can use and alarm that you can 
configure, but it really depends on your site. Uh, auto scaling uh, group defines a uh, large configuration that you will be using, but also describe uh, how many instances do you want to have. It describes your minimum, desired, and uh, maximum uh, capacity. Uh, also, this uh, auto scaling group defines uh, timing when this will be. Uh, happen. Uh, how much do you want to have, uh, like for example, cooldown time from last activity, and also define uh, which alarm triggers will uh, trigger this uh, scaling. Uh, how auto scaling group uh, work? Well, uh, well, you, when you have a spike, for example, auto scaling group will launch new instance. Uh, and after this instance pass all health checking, it will be added to ELB and it will be start routing traffic to uh, this uh, instance. Be aware, uh, auto scaling group will not launch more than maximum capacity, so keep eye on this uh, number and always, always put it a little higher than you expect. Uh, also, after uh, rush hour, Pass. Uh, this auto scaling group will uh, remove one by one instance until desired capacity is met, and everything, everything this scaling will is done by uh, alarm triggers that you have uh, defined, and in this case is CPU uh, utilization. Uh, be aware, uh, uh, any data written to this uh, server will be uh, destroyed during uh, during uh, these scaling events. In that case, we need to make uh, our WordPress to be uh, stateless. Uh, in previous chapter, we have uh, covered uh, user-generated files, but uh, third-party plugins can use uh, file system, and uh, I cannot give you the right recipe, what you need to do this, because it's uh, really different from plugin to plugin, but be aware uh, of this. Uh, fortunately, WordPress does not use uh, any session storage uh, of PHP. Uh, it's using uh, cookies uh, with uh, uh, query against uh, database to authenticate user. But third-party plugins can also use session, which will be probably be misbehave. But be aware of this. Uh, our final uh, schema will be look something like that. Route 53 for DNS management, CloudFront for uh, content distribution, ELB uh, for uh, routing uh, our inbound traffic to our instance, and uh, checking uh, health of our instance. We'll, this, uh, we'll have now uh, servers uh, in uh, two ability zone, and uh, in each availability zone, uh, this instance will automatically scale based on alarms which we defined. Uh, also, static files will be uh, hosted uh, on S3 bucket. How we need to do now uh, code deployment? And uh, once again, you cannot write anything to this instance. Anything during this scaling events will be uh, destroyed and uh, will not be shared among servers. What this means is that you can do uh, any uh, plugin team install, you can do any uh, upgrades of these plugin and teams. Uh, everything needs to be done on one place and then deployed somewhere else. Uh, I will cover two uh, types of uh, deployment. The first one is uh, by pre-baking your Amazon machine uh, images. Uh, this is done by using one gold instance, and you make all your change on this instance. And uh, after you make your change, you create a new snapshot of this instance. You update to actually create a new launch configuration and update your existing auto-scaling uh, group. What you need to do Next is uh, somehow uh, deploying these changes. You can do this manually by terminating one by one instance, or you can use some tool uh, for that. Uh, one tool is AWS AJ release tool, 
or you can use some configuration management tools like Ansible or any other similar tool. What this tool do? Uh, well, they increase uh, maximum capacity for one and launch new instance with new launch configuration. After this instance pass all health check, they will terminate uh, one old instance and launch new, and this will be uh, repeated until all instances are replaced. After this happen, uh, maximum capacity will be returned to original value. Uh, this also, like you see, can be really, really slow, but have one big benefit. You can do uh, system upgrades uh, during uh, these deployments. Uh, this is not something for, let's say, a uh, few daily changes. So we have another uh, deployment method for that. We can use AWS code deploy, which is uh, a file and command line uh, deployment tool. Uh, it does support auto scaling group, so you can uh, target only one scaling group. Uh, it does support uh, rolling updates, which will give you uh, benefit of, for example, uh, sending your deployment to 30% of your instance. You can monitor uh, this uh, deployment and you can stop it uh, and roll back in case you have see something uh, wrong. Uh, you have also deployment history. Uh, code deploy integrated with uh, Git uh, or S3 uh, for a source. For example, if you're using S3, we will just give path to S3, uh, which is uh, zip version of your uh, code. Uh, during this change, it uh, only code is changed, but uh, it's much, much faster uh, way. So what's next after we have covered uh, this? Well, instance types. Uh, there's a variety uh, kind of this instance, and by my personal experience, T2 instance are just uh, for deployment, testing, and staging. Uh, M3 and M4 instance are for some small projects. C3 and C4 instance are uh, actually for production because they are much, much more CPU uh, powerful. And R3 instance are for database and uh, caching uh, layer. Like you saw here, uh, there is a lot of step and a lot of configuration that you need to write uh, and make. So you will probably like to automate these things. Uh, I will just mention a few of these tools and I will not go in deep with these tools because it's another uh, topic. You can use Amazon Beanstalk, uh, CloudFormation, Cloud Deploy, configuration management tool, tools like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, or you can build your own uh, in-house tools because Amazon supports uh, everything through API. Monitoring. You will like to monitor all of your uh, things. Uh, Amazon provides hundreds and hundreds of these metrics. Pick one that fits best for you and keep eye uh, on this metric. Uh, you can use uh, also some external tool for big screen display in your office. And my current uh, favorite is Librato, which can aggregate all of these uh, metrics. And the last thing is cost. Well, uh, using Amazon Cloud can be really costly because there is uh, sometimes hidden fee that you don't look at first. For example, like uh, request counts, uh, network traffic, and things like that. But you can reduce this cost by using reserved uh, instance. And you can say from, I don't know, 10 to up to 50% on uh, this service, depending on how much you commit, for example, for all upfront, one year, three years, and things like that. And always enable billing alarms. These alarms uh, will inform you if you have, I don't know, some, something wrong set up, so you will know with uh, this. So this was my first WordCamp presentation, and thank you for your attention. And questions are welcome. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, please pass the mic or I will try to run around and pass it on. Uh.
it will be easier to hear and also it will help for the recording. Any questions? Yep. So I'm gonna pause. All right. Uh, yep. I'm I'm curious. How do you transfer uh, the MySQL uh, data from a local MySQL or, or a dedicated MySQL server to RDS? Uh, well, uh, because uh, RDS is uh, MySQL compatible, uh, you can just use um, MySQL CLI console, so you can load your file export. Okay. You do MySQL dump from your existing local and just load it to okay. RDS. Any more questions? Um, the Amazon's um, MySQL replacement, I can't remember, is it Aurora, is that what it's called? Yes, yeah. Aurora. Is this something that you've used, used yourself with WordPress? I've seen just recently in an article that it's supposed to be very much faster. Yes, uh, Aurora is actually a new service, new uh, engine that went out of bed, I think, uh, last month. So it's pretty much uh, faster. It's Amazon implementation of MySQL engine. So have, they have tuned uh, various things for their infrastructure. So it will be much, much uh, faster. My tests uh, also provide that this is faster, and they are compatible with uh, 5.6 MySQL version. Mm, thanks. Yeah. Anyone else? Also, feedbacks are welcome. You can send me by email or any, you can contact me here. Well, uh, thank you for your presentation, and uh, we have a few minutes until the next presentation at 10 o'clock, yeah, like in five minutes. So thank you. Thank you.